Welcome back. We join you in progress here in the fifth inning as the Majors take on the Jackfish. Brandon Underhill in for his first at-bat of the ball game after coming on as a defensive replacement. A full count here from De Los Santos to Underhill. Andrew Mercy got his first hit of the year earlier on. The pitch from De Los Santos. Underhill lines that one after McQueen. He can't make the play. It's into right field. So after no hits in the first four innings for Welland, they've quickly got two in a row, and they're pressing. Yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, here's Welland's chance, right? Pedro de los Santos was cruising uh, through this game, at least uh, through four, and now uh, a couple runners on the pond here, a couple ducks on the pond, if you will, uh, for the Welland Jackfish, as uh, Pedro de los Santos now has got to calm it down, and now, again, Keep pounding that zone with one out. A, a ground ball could get you out of this inning. Absolutely it could. Here's the pitch from De Los Santos on its way to Marriott. It's in for a called strike one. So one out here in this fifth inning. De Los Santos in need of a double play to get him out of this pretty quickly. De Los Santos sets out there on the mound. Marriott ready in the batter's box. Here's the pitch. That's a called strike two on the inside corner. And maybe he doesn't need a double play. Maybe he pitches <laughs> his way out of this the way he's rolling here to Marriott. He got Mackey pretty quickly when he was uh, up at the plate, but Underhill got a single off of him. Here's the 0-2, and Marriott fouls that one off, I believe, the foot of the umpire, and it remains 0-2 now. Well, and if you're Marriott here, right, with two strikes, yeah, you got to protect, but do not hit a ground ball. Pitch is on the ground, and Jaco tries to get after oh. it. A bit of commotion there as both guys trying to get out of the way of one another and get the baseball in the case of Jaco, and it's a foul ball. Yeah, a bit of a confusing play. You know, the majors would have loved that to stay fair, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if they even would have been able to get the runner uh, second there, but it still would have gotten uh, Pedro de los Santos closer to getting into this uh, situation. Here's the pitch from De Los Santos, just misses outside. Count moves to one ball and two strikes now. He sets out there very quickly once again on the mound. Knows what he wants to throw. Here's the one, two to Marriott. Swung on and missed strike three. Tied him up in knots, and that's going to be the second out of the fifth inning. And now De Los Santos needs one good pitch to get him out of it. Yeah, really good A-B there, right? You just said it. I mean, if he can get a strike, yeah to help his case and try to get out of this inning as fast as he can. and He's had great stuff all night, and, he hasn't, and he's been missing bats at a really good clip but still been able to locate the zone really effectively, and he does it there. That'll bring up Brandon Danson. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game today as De Los Santos sets out there on the mound. Still runners at first and second with two outs. Danson on the ground towards first base. Johnson makes the play on it. Will touch the bag, and the side is retired. We're through four and a half. This ball game is now official here at Labatt Park. We head to the bottom of the fifth. You're watching Majors Baseball on Majors TV.
Welcome back to the Bat Park. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning here between the London Majors and the Welland Jackfish. The Majors lead at 3 0. Carlos Artiega steps up to the plate, had an RBI double in his last at bat. He's two for two in the ball game. And Jackson, we talked about the success he's had against Rich Corrente. Well, <laughs> you know, it's funny, coming into this game, we talked about it, how effective he was. I mean, coming into the game, he was six for 13, now eight for 15, so hitting over 500 uh, against Corrente career-wise. Or not career-wise, right? Well, I guess, yeah, career-wise, that would be. Career-wise yes. against Corrente, as that pitch misses for ball one, Artiega squared to bunt. Corrente into the windup, here's the 1-0. Artiega on the ground in a tough spot. Underhill is going to get there. Has to throw quickly to get Artiega at first. It's not in time. He's safe. So a close play over at first base results in a wow. single for Carlos Artiega, and the Majors have a leadoff base runner. Well, and Artiega continues what has been a fantastic day. Now three for three on the day. And that was a story we had talked about kind of briefly heading into this game about how Artiega had hit Corrente really well in his career. But he's showing it now. And... Uh, when your number two hitter is, is hitting like that, right, ideally your best contact hitter before the heart of the order coming up, they did it back in the third inning, and now they're doing it again here with a chance with nobody out and Brownlee at the plate to really cause some more damage. Absolutely. Cleveland steps up to the plate now with a runner at first base and nobody out. He looks over at Brent Wales for the signs and now gets ready to face Corrente, who comes set on the mound. Here's the pitch to Cleveland. He swings through that one for a strike one. Artiego over at first base. Brownlee not sitting off speed on the first pitch of the at-bat. Yeah, it looked like the yeah, speed there. He thought it might have been something else. Here's the 0-1 as Corrente sets out there on the mound. Now moves over to first to check on Artiego. He's not going anywhere, and he's back to the bag safely. Not exactly a deceptive <laughs> move either. Just kind of throwing over to keep him close. Checking in. Corrente looks in. And now comes set on the mound. Here's the pitch. Cleveland lines that one hard, caught by Toughlin to third, makes a throw over to first, and that is not in time to get the double play. Brownlee hit it hard, but Toughlin was perfectly placed. He leapt up and made the play, well, nearly a double play. And how about a heads up play there, right, by the third baseman to make that incredible snag and then turn and look at first and realize, you know what, I might have him, I might double him up here. It, it didn't end up happening, but still a great effort. Now the only risk there, of course, is if you get a little too ahead of yourself and throw it over the first baseman, then you really caused, caused yourself some issues. But he does a really good job there uh, defensively, Toughlin does. Great play there by Toughlin over at third base. That brings up Byron Reitstein. With one out here in this bottom of the fifth inning, still in a good spot in the Majors order to do some damage if you are the team. Reitstein looks out at Corrente. He's set out there on the mound, looks over at Artiega at first. Here's the pitch. Byron lines that one hard, cut by Underhill. This time they've got Artiega at first base. Two lineouts. Carlos got back the first time, but not the second time. We head to the top of the sixth inning here at Labatt Park. The Majors lead at 3 0.
Welcome back to Majors Baseball on Majors TV. You may have seen it right there, a dizzy bat race. Pl pretty clear-cut winner as somebody was far and ahead of the pack as Griffin Keller steps up to the plate for the third time tonight. His third plate appearance has got a walk and a ground out. Here's the pitch from De Los Santos. Keller hits that one on the ground. After it is McQueen, charges on it to get the big hop. On the run throw to first, and that'll be in time to get the first out of the top of the sixth. Play there defensively. Good stuff there by Pedro De Los Santos, of course. Pitch count climbing, climbing. He's having such a good outing. And we talked about keeping that pitch count nice and low so you can get further and further into the game, preserve that major's bullpen for what is going to be a very busy weekend as much as you can. Absolutely it is, Jackson. Uh, four games in three days for the majors with a doubleheader on Sunday, as that will bring up Dane Topland. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game today. Stepping up his, for his third plate appearance, of the evening at Labatt Park. The pitch from De Los Santos on its way. Toplin takes a called strike one, so he's behind the count early, 0-1. And that's what it's all about, getting ahead in the count early on, throwing the first pitch strike, setting the tone for the at-bat. Here's the pitch. Toplin swings through that one for strike two, a big swing and came up empty. Yeah, big cut there. Not sure if he was looking for a different pitch or maybe just had thoughts of a home run. Topland has had some uh, home runs so far this season as De Los Santos goes into the windup. Here's the 0-2. Topland hits that one in the air and foul straight back towards us. And the count will remain at 0-2. I'm really liking the approach that Pedro De Los Santos has adopted this game. right? And we had talked about how he needs to limit his walks, but just pounding the zone, uh, pitching to contact in many cases, and not being afraid to, to pitch in the zone as well. That pitch is a called strike three. So pitching in the zone results in a strikeout there for Pedro De Los Santos as Toughland is caught looking. That'll be the second out of this top of the sixth inning. Oh, and the guy guy's swinging hard, taking some deep cuts. Keep working it, and Pedro De Los Santos knows exactly what he's doing 0-2 uh, to be able to get that strikeout. Here's the pitch that'll miss high and away for ball one. De Los Santos into the windup and time called, I believe, by the hitter there. <laughs> Here's the pitch from De Los Santos. Working takes up and away for ball two. So two balls and no strikes now to the Jackfish cleanup hitter. Yeah, just missing outside there with both those pitches. The pitch from De Los Santos is going to miss as well. So now three balls and no strikes from De Los Santos, who has... Two walks so far in the ball game today. Now he moves into the windup here, the 3-0 on its way. That's going to miss as well. So a four-pitch walk to Warkin. And a four-pitch walk is a bad sign in the sense that it shows that there was not much command going on there. But it does keep the pitch count lower than, than it would if there was a hard-worked walk. So he's still relatively low compared to where he was coming into the at-bat, only throwing four pitches. Yeah, but Dylan, you just never want to walk uh, the runner with two out. right? You never want to have to do that, especially in a situation where you're leading. It's not a big lead. Right, and as a guy who's already prone to walks in a situation where Wellens lineup ain't no pushover, right? This is a lineup that can do a lot of damage very fast. Never want to walk the hitter with two out. We'll see how Pedro can adjust here. So that'll bring up Matt Hildebrandt. He takes a called strike one, and that'll uh, this will be his third plate appearance of the ball game. A line out and a ground out so far in the previous two. As Dale Santos takes a look over at first base at Warkin, Hildebrandt swings right through that one. A big cut there from the big first baseman for the Jackfish, and it's 0-2. And yeah, we're seeing De Los Santos get right back to what was working for him earlier on in the inning. Just pounding the zone, getting the, those whiffs. The 0-2 from Hildebrandt trying to retire him, and he nice. will. A swing and a miss, strike three. Hildebrandt is set down for the third out of the sixth inning. De Los Santos is through six scoreless here at Labatt Park. The Majors lead at 3-0 as we hit to break.
Welcome back to Majors Baseball on Majors TV. Dylan Baker, Jackson Farrow here with you. And Jackson, Rich Corrente is out for his sixth inning of work. Both guys still going strong after uh, at least five innings. Despite the fact that Corrente's allowed three runs, he's pitched very well today, minus a few mistakes. Oh, absolutely. And uh, listen, this Majors lineup is no easy task to navigate, as we talked about. And he also had some bad luck. Um, some situations where some tough hops were his defenders behind him and some situations where maybe he would have liked an out here or there. Uh, but overall, he's remained consistent. And one thing he's done is, is stayed in control as much as he could and kept the game within reach. Right? You Absolutely. don't want this game to turn into an 8 9 nothing affair. Keep it within three. Give your lineup a chance here to get back in this one. Yeah, when you're down as a starting pitcher, that's your main job. Make sure that this game stays close so your offense has a chance to get back into it. They haven't had that opportunity so far as De Los Santos has also been cruising. Hayden Jaco steps up to the plate. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game today. The pitch from Corrente is going to miss outside for ball one. Jaco, a fielder's choice and a pop out to center field so far in the ball game. Hit one hard to Brennan Dadson to end the first inning as that pitch will miss off the outside part of the plate. Count moves to two balls and no strikes now. And just outside, the, you know, the one thing that the majors have done really well, the leadoff hitter, getting on base a lot. We'll see if that Jaco can follow suit here. That's going to miss outside for ball three. We take a look at Rich Corrente's stats so far in this ball game. The majors have had two runners on base to start innings so far, and that's when they've scored their runs. That's a called strike to Jaco. Uh, Corrente has, has retired the, the first batter in most of the innings he's pitched so far but uh, except for those two innings mm -hmm. where the Majors scored their runs and did their damage. The pitch to Jaco, he hits that one in the air to left center field and deep. Moving back on it now towards the warning track, just short of it is Keller, and he will make the catch. Jaco sent that one for a ride and had some of the fans in the ballpark anticipating yeah. another home run, but <laughs> Keller puts him away. Great swing on that. Hey, and, and he really did drive that one to the left center. Looked like it might have even been a gapper at one point. Just a little too much air underneath it. Allow the left fielder enough time to come over and, and make the grab. So that'll bring up Julian Johnson. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game So far today, he's lined out and grounded out as Rich Corrente digs in to face him for the third time. Corrente's been efficient so far through his outing as that pitch misses outside. Uh, he's thrown 68 pitches so far in the ball game. Corrente into the windup, the 1 0. That's going to miss outside. Two balls and no strikes. Now to the Majors' first baseman. A lot of balls missing outside at the moment. So the catcher there stand up for a second. Warkin just giving his pitcher an extra second here. Here's the pitch. Johnson swings through that one. A big cut at that. And now the count moves to two balls and a strike. Yeah, big 2 0 cut there. He certainly had vision to drive on that one in the left center. Into the windup is Corrente. Here's the pitch. Johnson flares that one into foul territory. Mercier running after it. Getting out of the way is the first base coach for the Majors. And the catch is made by Mercier in foul territory for the second out of this sixth inning. This is an important inning, I think, for Corrente here. Right? As your pitch count continues to climb, like we talked about, trying to keep your team within the game. When you're losing like this, if your starter can at least put up, maybe you know, get up a three up, three down here through the middle to bottom part of this major's order, uh, it, it would do wonders potentially for your hitters here to keep them in the game and give them a chance here with just nine outs remaining. The pitch from Corrente to Humberto Ruiz. That's a called strike one. If you'll recall, in the second inning, Humberto Ruiz went deep with his first home run of the year. And that was the first major's run, the only run they scored in that second, and then they scored two in the third. That pitch misses outside. It'll be ball one, one and one. Well, he just got a great pitch to hit. Can you hear the whole cliche term, you know, see it, drive it. But he really did that, and he yeah. did such a good job staying with it, and it was pretty much a no-doubter left. That's inside, and it's going to hit the inside corner for a called strike. I thought for a second that it hit Ruiz with the way he yeah. reacted, but he was just upset that that was called a strike, so it's one and two now on the major's left fielder. Those contentious uh, conversations around the strike zone seem to have dimmed a little bit throughout the game. They have, but they're still here nonetheless <laughs> as that pitch misses outside. Count moves to even now at two balls and two strikes to the Majors outfielder. Corrente into the windup. The 2-2 home to Ruiz. That's outside and dropped by the catcher Wark and not that it really matters. Count moves to full now at three balls and two strikes. And like we just talked about, you do not want to walk a hitter with two out. And we'll see... Uh, what Corrente's got in store for Ruiz here. Pretty pivotal pitch. Corrente into the windup. Here's a pitch to Ruiz. He was early on that pitch and fouls it back towards the backstop. So the count will remain at 3-2 and two when we'll do this again. 
And great job battling here from Ruiz. What a great game from him. He's got the home run now. He's battling here uh, at this point with two out and a full count here. Running Corrente's pitch count up higher and higher, making him really work for the out. Now at 80 pitches, here's the pitch. Ruiz swings right through that one on a foul tip, and that will retire the side. So Corrente's through six innings, having given up three runs. We head to break here from Levant Park. Majors are up 3-0. Welcome back to Majors Baseball on Majors TV. Getting you set for the top of the seventh inning is Pedro De Los Santos back out there for his seventh inning of work. Thrown 86 pitches so far. Here's the pitch. That's swung on and missed by Dave Benning, who leads off this inning. He is 0 for 2 in today's ball game. The 0-1, Dave Benning takes that pitch inside as Jaco scoops it, and it's 1-1. One Here is the 1-1 one, one from De Los Santos. That's going to miss, and Jaco, I think, wanted that call, as did De Los Santos, but instead the count moves to two balls and a strike. Here's the pitch from De Los Santos. That's high, 3-1 and one now on Day Banning. No action in the Majors' bullpen as they're letting Pedro ride this one out. He threw more than this, significantly more than this, in his previous outing against Kitchener. I think he was up near 120 pitches. That's on the ground towards second base. McQueen will make the play off the lip. Throw to first is in time, and that will be the first out of the top of the seventh inning. Getting that first out of the inning, uh, so crucial, of course, in these late innings now, where you know every batter matters that much more. When you only up three, you know, if you keep, the, keep those bases clean, and even if you do make a mistake and you allow a solo shot, it's, it's not a two-run or three-run shot to really kind of pull the game closer. It's just one. Absolutely. As that'll bring up Andrew Mercier to face De Los Santos. Mercier got his first hit of the season with a hard single to Chris McQueen his last time up. McQueen made the play on it but couldn't make the throw. That's on the ground in foul territory. De Los Santos and Johnson will chase it down, but it will get foul. And so in one now on Mercier. Mercy, resident of London, Ontario, but plays for the Welland Jackfish. Played for them when they were in Burlington as well. He has an 0-1 count against De Los Santos. Pedro not wasting any time, despite the fact that he just tracked a foul ball down. That swung on and missed by Mercier. Took a big cut at that one, and it's 0-2. Sure did, and I wonder if he was looking for a different pitch there. Uh, but yeah, he swung out of his shoes on that one. I don't Quick. know the exact repertoire of De Los Santos, but it looks like he throws a lot of different pitches, so it's hard to guess as Mercier fouls that one back. Well, it's hard for us to guess. Now, imagine <laughs> if you're a hitter up there. Absolutely, right, Trying to hit yeah. that thing, yeah. If you got a lot of different pitches to work with. You know, you're mixing it around. Still doing that at this point of the game. Really effective. Here's the pitch from De Los Santos. Mercier rides that one towards center field. Philmon chasing after it, and he's going to track that ball down for the second out of the inning. Good job by Adam Philmon getting after that line drive. Well, Philmon's had a fantastic day in the field. He had that great diving play earlier. And, and again, we see it where he's got a great first step in center field. That's so important as an outfielder, but especially as the leader of the outfield in center field. Great job there ranging to his left to make the play, and he made it seem almost routine, didn't he? He sure did, and 
Did a great job tracking that ball down as that will bring up Brandon Underhill. He's one for one so far. Only had one at bat after coming in as a defensive replacement for Mackey. And that pitch misses outside for ball one. Here is the 1 0 to Underhill. That's going to miss inside. Count moves to two balls and no strikes. Underhill lined a single to right field just out of the reach of Chris McQueen, the second baseman, in his previous at bat. De Los Santos takes some time, goes for a walk behind the mound, and gathers his thoughts. First time we've said that all game, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's a fast worker, that's for sure. 2 0 from De Los Santos on its way to Underhill. There's a pitch that's going to miss. I was getting ready to say there's a called strike, but uh, didn't get the call there. Here's the 3-0 to Underhill. That's in there for a called strike. Delo Santos has allowed just two hits, has walked three and struck out six in the ball game. That walk number is a little more elevated than he'd like it to be, but still having a pretty good ball game. As that'll be ball four, his fourth walk of the game now, as Underhill will take his base, and that'll bring up Eric Marriott. So you have the number nine hitter coming up. And with two out and a runner on, the one thing you don't want him to do is to turn that lineup over, right? And especially in a situation like this, you're late now in the game. You've got two out. Starters had a great game so far. Uh, it'd be a real shame if De Los Santos uh, isn't able to find a way out of this inning here. Absolutely. He's got to work to Marriott now, and he does not want to turn it over to the top of the order like you mentioned. The pitch is going to hit Marriott, oh. so... The first thing he does wow. is turn it over to the top of the order. There you go. And uh, Marriott is aboard for the first time tonight. So now the lineup turns over. De Los Santos sits at 100 pitches. And Brandon Danson steps up for the fourth time today. Yeah, this is a priv pretty pivotal at bat. Needless to say, I think, with the tying run at the plate, De Los Santos, he's had a great game so far, but now we see it. A uh, couple walks coming to back to haunt him now a little bit. We'll see if he's able to battle with two outs or if he succumbs to the pressure. Pitch to Dadson is going to miss high. Now, in, in knowing Pedro for the few weeks that we have, he's a very calm guy. He does yep. not get rattled out there. If he's in a tough spot, he feels he's able to work out of it. He knows what he's got, and we'll see if he's able to do that against Dadson here, who takes another big swing and misses right there. It seems that a lot of these Jackfish players are taking big swings and coming up empty. Yeah, and you wonder if that's maybe an approach thing or if it's just De Los Santos' stuff fooling them. Could be either. Here's the pitch to Dadson. That's going to miss high. So two balls and a strike now. De Los Santos, as the pitch count gets higher, he loses the command a little bit, it seems. At four walks now, maybe it's the fatigue factoring in at this point in the ball game. Still 3 nothing majors here in the seventh. That's going to just miss the inside corner. And that's the last thing you need right now when you're missing the strike zone in general to not get that call there on the edge of the strike zone. A lot of umpires in the crowd tonight. Certainly <laughs> hear them vocal on that one. The 3-1 home from De Los Santos inside to Dadson, ball four. So the bases will now be loaded for Griffin Keller. Keller 0 for 2 in the game. About as pivotal a moment in the game as you can get. You've got three walks in this inning for De Los Santos. And now with the bases loaded, it'll be interesting to see what the Majors bullpen uh, is looking like. Looks like they're getting somebody going yeah. out there. And pitching coach Brent Wales is making his way over to the mound to talk to Pedro, try to calm him down. Looks like Mike DeLong is getting ready to loosen up in that Majors bullpen. DeLong closed out the game that Pedro pitched last Saturday and looked very good in his return from injury. Yeah, and I think if you're the, the Majors here, you definitely want to give De Los Santos a chance to get out of his own uh, mess, if you will, and, and fix his... The, the problem that he's found himself in here, but the base is loaded two out. You know, all you're really looking for here is, of course, a strikeout, which De Los Santos is very capable of delivering, but he just hasn't been able to find the zone that much this inning. And you wonder if at this point, with the bases loaded and two out, can he find it? And is now the point where, one of the, you know, we talked about a lot of these big swings, these big cuts in the well and lineup. You wonder now if maybe this is a chance for Keller here, if he can connect on one of these to really, you know, flip this game upside down. Absolutely. We'll see if he's able to do that here. As DeLong looks like he's loosening up slowly. So it looks like this inning is De Los Santos is to finish. He looks like he's getting up for the eighth, but we'll see what happens as Rube Chanadat heads over to talk to him. We're back on the game now. The first pitch from De Los Santos is going to miss high. Looked like he had a little bit of extra juice on that pitch after throwing a lot of off speed and getting a visit from his pitching coach. 106 pitches into this ball game. The pitch from De Los Santos, the 1-0. On the ground, right back to De Los Santos, nearly bobbles, throws to Johnson at first, and he gets out of it unscathed. 
He gets a little ground ball right back to him, and the side is retired. De Los Santos runs into trouble in the seventh, but is through seven scoreless innings. Welcome back to Labatt Park. Majors lead at 3 0. And Jackson, we just saw a huge moment in the ball game as Dilo Santos got through a score of the seventh inning. We sure did. I mean, that's just such a massive at bat at this point of the game. Right? It's the seventh inning, bases loaded. It's a 3 0 lead for the Majors. Dilo Santos, who has been so reliable throughout the entire game, it looked like he might finally be in trouble. And from a Welland perspective, that they may finally have found the opportunity to, to get right back in this game. But well, he pitches to contact, he dials it in after the, the meeting from the pitching coach and is able to just throw a strike when he needed to the most. You talked about it in that at bat, it looked like he was throwing more fastballs. Looks like he just kind of got back to basics. And you know, he made that little bubble on that defensive play. But just stayed calm, like you talked about. He stayed calm, didn't let his emotions get the best of him there. And as a result, Majors continue to lead 3-0 here. So here's the first pitch from Rich Corrente, who's still out there. That's going to miss low to Adam Filmon for ball one. Filmon in the ball game, 0 for 2. Seems like the same guys have been getting all these hits for both sides. The pitch is going to miss outside. Keith Candell waits on deck. He'll be followed by Chris McQueen in the top of the major's order. Corrente looks in, and into the windup he goes. The 2-0 to Filmon is on the inside corner for strike one. Number eight hitter leading off the inning here in Philmon. Great day defensively with the glove. And we'll see if maybe he can get on base here. That pitch is going to miss outside. Three and one now to Corrente, or from Corrente to Philmon, I should say. And he works right back into the windup. The pitch is on the outside corner. So it'll be a called strike two, and the count moves to full now on Philmon, who is yet to swing at a pitch in this at-bat. That's a great pitch there from Corrente. Three one, and he catches the corner. The 3-2 home to Philmon. He floats that one into center field. Going to be a tough play. After it is Marriott, and he will get there for the first out of this bottom of the seventh inning. Yeah, it's a real good at-bat there, though, from Philmon. Nonetheless, at this point of the game, you're late into the game. The starter's still working. You've got the lead. Just put together good at-bats. That's exactly what he did. He had a 3-1 count. Ultimately, it didn't work out. And he flies out to his center fielder counterpart. But you know, from the number eight hitter, you can't ask too, too much more. Uh, leading off the inning, when, especially when you have a lead. Good at bat there from Philmon. Well, Philmon's been a guy that we've seen so far this season. He battles at the plate. Every yeah. time he's up there, he works a long at bat. The pitch to Keith Candell misses outside. Keith doubled uh, earlier on in the ball game. was driven home by a Carlos Artiega double. That was Keith's last at bat that he doubled on. A hard ground ball down the third baseline. Here's the pitch to Candell. That's going to miss inside and low. Count moves to two balls and no strikes now. Really like what Candell brings to this team. Right? He's toolsy, good defensively, of course, at a premium position as well. That's going to miss outside. Now we have Jared Lund getting up next to Mike DeLong in the Majors bullpen. Possibly if this game gets a little wider in the lead for the Majors in this inning, it'll be Lund's game. But as of right now, it's DeLong, unless the Majors are able to score one here. And it looks like they're on the right track to start doing that as Keith Candell draws a one-out walk and flips it over to the top of the order with a base runner. Well, that's exactly what you want your number nine hitter to do. Even just uh, when you're starting 8-9-1 in the inning, if you can get one of those two hitters at the bottom of the lineup to get on base, however it may be, you know, bring it back to the top of the order. We've seen how effective this top and middle part of the lineup for the majors can be, whether it be historically against Corrente or in this game. Real good opportunity here for the majors potentially to extend their lead. So we didn't talk about the well in bullpen, but it looks like there is action out there as 
There's a mound visit right now. Doesn't look like Corrente's ready to come out of this ball game. It looked like manager Brian Esri came out there and asked him, hey, are you, how are you feeling? And Corrente kind of shrugged and said, I'm feeling all right, I can keep going. And Esri will let him try to finish this inning as he'll walk off the field. Corrente sitting at 91 pitches in this ball game so far as he works in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, and I think part of that message too is, look, you're one ground ball away from getting out of this inning. Right? A double play here clears you, and, and it's still been an effective outing for Corrente, like we talked about, despite the three runs. He's done a really good job of keeping the game within reach. Can he continue doing that here? We're getting word that's Casey Howard in the Jackfish bullpen warming up to come in in the event that Corrente can't finish this inning. Here's the pitch from Corrente. McQueen squares, pulls back as that pitch is well outside and low, 1-0. Majors lead 3-0. McQueen 0 for 3 in the game, though. He made some nice stops defensively. Corrente looks in at uh, working for the sign. Now comes set out there on the mound. McQueen ready in the batter's box. The 1-0. McQueen hits that one in the air to left field. Backing up on it now is... Keller, who will make the catch, and Candell will retreat back to the bag. Looked to me like a hit and run. I believe Candell yep. was off on that pitch, but uh, no dice for the Majors. Two out now in the bottom of the seventh. A yeah, decent opportunity there. And when they hit the run on, clearly trying to get something going on the bases. And, and that wasn't a bad uh, swing there from McQueen. That wasn't a bad effort, uh, but he's just able to drive the ball right in the left field, right to the left fielder. Our contact to no avail that time. And uh, Workin comes out to talk to Rich Corrente about Carlos Artiega, who is three for three in the ball game, and that could be what is pulling Brian Esri back out yeah. there to the mound now. This could be the end of the line for Corrente because of the, the success that Artiega has had in the ball game with Cleveland Brownlee on deck. Looks like he's going to take the ball from Corrente, we believe, possibly just going over the game plan as Corrente departs. The runner at first base in Keith Candell is his responsibility. It's the bottom of the seventh inning here at Labatt Park. 3-0 Majors, as we'll take a quick break and get you right back. Welcome back to Labatt Park. Casey Bouillard Howard out there on the mound for the Welland Jackfish. So far, six earned runs and four innings in three games for the Jackfish this season. Uh, Casey is a public school teacher, we've just recently learned, and uh, apparently a very nice guy. I haven't had the chance to meet Casey. I'm not sure if you have Jackson. Uh, but I have he, is, he is out to face Carlos Artiega, who has had some great success against Rich Corrente in the ball game as the fans get going here at Labatt Park. And uh, with Artiega being three for three against Corrente, it kind of did feel like a no-brainer to bring in a reliever in this situation. Yep, and, and Corrente's had a nice outing, but he was you know, approaching right up to 100 pitches and about time to get into the bullpen now. Again, you still want to keep this game within reach with a runner on with Artiega up, even with two out. Uh, he's had great success against Corrente in his career, as we've talked about at nauseum at this point. Uh, and I think it's time that Welland gave him a different look from the mound. And the next batter is 
Cleveland Brownlee, who has also had success and can do a lot of damage with one swing. Uh, so no brainer to take Corrente out and bring Booyer Howard in as Carlos Artiega will come to the plate to face Booyer Howard. As we mentioned, Artiega is three for three. He's got a single, a double, and a single in the ball game. That last single was a tight play over at first base. Fielded by the second baseman, Brandon Underhill, and not quite in time to Mercier. Jackfish certainly thought they got Carlos as Booyer Howard comes set out there on the mound as Candell over at first base. Booyer Howard's offering. Swung on and missed by Carlos. It's 0-1. Howard digs into the mound. Certainly a slower worker than Rich Corrente was, and I'm sure that that'll be the case with any major relievers that they bring in in relief of Pedro de los Santos as the pitch from Buyer Howard. On the run is Candell. Swung on and missed by Artiega. The throw is into center field. Candell thinks about going to third, but it wasn't far enough, so it'll be a stolen base for Keith Candell on what looked to be a hit and run, and the majors have a runner in scoring position with two out. Great jump there from Candell. Uh, I'm not sure if Wellen was expecting that runner to go or not, but regardless, yeah, it looked like the hit and run was on, Dylan. A good time to do it here with a new pitcher in, right, who works a little slower like you talked about. Well, uh, Carlos, usually a pretty patient guy, chased after a pitch well out of the zone there, which makes me think it was a hit and yeah. run. And the majors are no stranger to hit and runs, as we saw them pull one with Chris McQueen at the plate just a batter ago. Here's the pitch to Carlos, the 0-2. He'll swing and miss, strike three. So the inning is over. We're through seven complete at Labatt Memorial Park. The majors lead it 3-0. Pedro de los Santos back out there for his eighth inning of work as we enter the top of the eighth here at Labatt Park. He's at 107 pitches, but he's pitched very well tonight, Jackson. Yeah, and, and it's very clear that he's earned this opportunity to come back out and at least start this inning. All right, and, uh, and we do see the Majors bullpen very active, um, but I think regardless, I think manager Rube Chanderdat said, look, last time you gave me eight innings, right? I don't see why you can't give me another eight. He's had a fantastic day. If you'll recall, I mean, in the last inning where he did have some trouble, bases loaded two out, those were all walks. So you wonder if perhaps if De, De Los Santos can get those walks under control, get the command under control here, albeit later in the outing, even if he is against the heart of the order here uh, for Welland. Uh, we'll see uh, if De Los Santos can potentially uh, give that bullpen some extra rest as they head into, like I said, a busy weekend. That's what the majors are hoping for is it'll be Toftland, uh, followed by Warkin and Hildebrandt. None of those players have a hit as that pitch misses outside, but Warkin does have two walks in the ball game. Here's the 1-0. That's going to miss outside, and now the count moves to two balls and no strikes. And we see early on here not having command of the strike zone. Got to wonder how long the leash will be if he is to walk a batter or two here. Here's the pitch, that's on the ground, a shortstop. Candell charging in, makes the play on the run throw, just in time wow. to get Toffland at first, and that'll be the first out of the inning. Crowd loves that, fantastic play there by Keith Candell. Last inning I was just complimenting his defense, makes a great play there to get the lead off uh, runner in this inning. And he actually, I mean, that was, a that was a bouncing ball, that was not an easy play to make, that ball was moving rather slowly. And he did a really, really good job of getting to that ball fast, and making sure he makes an accurate throw to first just in time. Fantastic play by the shortstop, Candell. Absolutely, as De Los Santos will now face Warkin for the third time tonight. He's uh, got 
A ground out, and he's worked two walks. Here's the pitch. That's going to miss inside. Working a very patient hitter, as we've come to know. And the Jackfish, a very patient lineup. A lot of these guys have a lot of walks so far early on in the season, so they are not afraid to lay off some tough pitches. That pitch is a called strike one. One thing, even in the eighth inning, De Los Santos moving extremely fast here. Absolutely, he is the 1-1. One -one. Lined hard and foul. Hope everybody's okay on the left mm. side as that ball was rocketed into the seats. Yeah, we definitely hope everyone's okay over there down the third base line. Pitch from De Los Santos will miss high as the count is now 1-2 and two to Warkin. Looks like everybody's settled, settling back in in their seats over there. Keeps you on your toes, that's for sure. The 2-2 on the ground towards second base. McQueen chases after it. He'll make the play and throw it over to Johnson just in the nick of time Ooh. to get Warkin. And that will be the second out of this eighth inning. Yeah, once again, we see a really close play at first, but just, again, good timing here uh, by a Majors infielder taking their time, being patient, uh, you know, making the play routinely, albeit, but still a fast runner, dogging it to first and making a really good throw. Uh, that inner clock I talked about earlier, really effective there with both Candell and McQueen. Late in the game, when your pitcher's got a lot of pitches uh, already and, and in a situation with such a close game, or a relatively close game, those outs are huge. Here's the pitch from De Los Santos. That's going to miss outside for a ball one. The Majors infield defense, the way it's configured right now, Jackson, is very stellar defensively mm -hmm. with McQueen at second, who's a natural shortstop. The pitch to Hildebrand is fouled off. Candel at short, and then Carlos Artiega at third base, who is also a shortstop. So three shortstops right. on the infield. They can typically play everywhere, and the defense is very solid. Well, even a guy like Julian Johnson, who prides himself on being able to play third and first. There's some versatility there as well. That swung on and missed by Hildebrandt, one and two. Hildebrandt DHing has played every other game this season for the Jackfish at first base, though. Uh, so this is his first time he's gotten off his feet and just DH'd for a game. Here's the pitch to Hildebrandt. That's going to miss high. Two balls and two strikes now from the Majors lefty, trying to get through eight complete innings, currently sitting at seven and two-thirds at 119 pitches. The 2-2 from De Los Santos swung on and missed. Hildebrandt is set down on strikes. Eight scoreless innings for Pedro De Los Santos and the Majors lead 3-0. What a great job there by Pedro De Los Santos. 2-2 two -two count. That could have gone a number of different ways after it was 1-2. He threw the ball upstairs. Now it's 2-2. Two -two. Okay, yes, two out, but still, you do not want to let a runner on in that um, situation. But great defense from the infield that even got De Los Santos to that point, and then he finished the job himself with a strikeout. Great stuff there in the eighth inning. And, hey, De Los Santos proved he clearly should have been out there for the eighth inning. Pitched very efficiently in that eighth inning as well. We head to the bottom of the eighth. It'll be Cleveland Brownlee, Byron Reichstein, and Hayden Jaco when we come back. Welcome back to Majors Baseball, Majors TV. Bottom of the eighth inning, Casey Bouillard Howard back out there. Jackson only threw three pitches in the seventh, so he is out there to work another inning. Yeah, going multiple innings here. Again, when the team's behind, you're hoping to get as many outs as you can from some of your relievers. In this situation, if you're the Majors, certainly looking to extend this lead. Now, I, you got to expect that De Los Santos won't come out for the ninth, given his pitch count, given the situation, but I suppose... It could be in the cards, despite uh, 
but appears to be the Majors bullpen working uh, very uh, aggressively here, I guess I could say. Yeah, Mike DeLong working out there in left field in the bullpen, so I think he's going to come in for the ninth the way he's working. He hasn't sat down, but we'll see. Cleveland Brownlee steps up. Last time DeLong was warming in a safe situation. Cleveland made it a non-safe situation yeah, with a two-run right. home run against the Kitchener Panthers. Nobody on base to start this inning against Booyer Howard, though, as he works from the windup now with nobody on. Cleveland fouls that one off on a pitch that got in on his hands. It's 0-1. Hard of the order for the Majors coming up here. Owen one to Cleveland as Booyer Howard looks in. Into the windup, the 0-1. Cleveland hits that one in the air. Center field, not all that deep. Marriott moves in, and he puts that one away. Cleveland, for the second time tonight, has taken a good swing, but just gotten under it. Yeah, this crowd, there was just this very quick. It was a stifled roar because they instantly realized that it was going to be a, a flyout. But that roar with Cleveland, you know, I, I, every time he makes contact, it feels like that roar sounds different than every other player on this Majors team. Absolutely. It's really interesting to see, even when it's a fly ball like that. You know, it just goes to show his reputation as a power hitter in this league. The power hitter in this league, being so involved in the community, the fans yeah. love him. They're excited every time he comes to the plate. Uh, Cleveland's got a reputation around the IBL and in the city of London of being a great guy, and he's put up numbers uh, to give fans a reason to cheer. As that's a called strike one to Byron Reichstein. Into the windup is Bouyer Howard. Here's the 0-1 to Reichstein. That's in the dirt for a ball, one and one. Reichstein, as we've talked about, he's had a fantastic start to this season as well. Into the windup is Bouyer Howard. Here's the pitch, the 1-1. Byron lines that one into right field. Going to be a tough play for Dave Banning, who was deep. And that's going to be a base hit for Byron Reichstein. So he's aboard for the Majors with one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Really nice stroke on that one. Really, really well timed. It's very clear he had one thing in mind. He's going to pull the ball into the outfield. Does a really good job of that. Not necessarily a hard hit ball. Right? That was one that was floating a little bit. Uh, but really effective job there by Reichstein. Just understanding kind of the moment too. Right? You got one out, nobody on. You're up 3 nothing, putting together a good A-B. But also, you don't need to necessarily swing for the fences. Just get on. Get something going here. So Hayden Jaco will step up. He's 0 for 3. He's had a hit in every game this season for the Majors, I believe, unless that streak was broken in Hamilton, but I don't believe it was. Uh, as Booyer Howard now working out of the stretch, the runner on. That's going to be a called strike one to Jaco. I can confirm that Jaco has had a hit in every single game, including a 2 for 3 game on Tuesday against Hamilton. Booyer Howard looks down. Here's the pitch. That's a line drive into right center field, and that ball's going to get down. Right side around second, he'll move to third. Marriott bobbles it in center field, but Byron will stop at third base, and the Majors are pressing with runners at the corners and one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Yeah, great job there. Uh, in a good approach, too, right? And with one out, you're trying to lift the ball. You're not trying to hit one on the ground or the shortstop or the second baseman that would give... Uh, well, and a quick sort of exit path out of this inning. And a really, really, really good job there. Just get the ball into the outfield. First to third, Reichstein is able to do now. And ju with just one out, you know, a sack fly puts this game actually out of a save situation potentially. Yeah, that's an extra, that's an added comfort if you're the major is getting another run here. Jaco extends his hitting streak to six games now. Here's the pitch to Julian Johnson that will miss outside from Bouyer Howard. And it's 1-0. and oh. And here's a guy, too, at the plate who understands the moment. An experienced guy, a guy who's been around, really good approach at the plate. That's a really valuable thing to have, especially in this situation with one-out runners in the corners. He'll be looking to do damage here. 1-0. and oh. Here's the pitch to Johnson. That's outside. Two balls and no strikes. Can't get too excited if you're at the plate. Got to yep. make sure it's a pitch you can hit and likely hit into the air to hopefully get Byron home from third. The only game Hayden Jaco doesn't have a hit in this season is the one he pitched in Toronto uh, a couple Sunday, or sorry, last Sunday, I believe, after the Kitchener game. Here's the pitch. Johnson swings through that one, took a big cut of that pitch. It's 2-1. and one. It looked like a good pitch to hit as well, uh, but the fastball able to beat him there. So Booyer Howard digs back in there on the mound. Johnson at the plate. 
Two and one, setting out there is Bouillard Howard. Here's the pitch. Johnson swings through that one. Throw over to first base, trying to nab Jaco. Not in time. Close Jaco. call there. Yeah, Jaco taking a big secondary lead. So oh. Warkin trying his best to get an extra out any way he can in a tough spot. So two and two now on the Majors number six hitter and first baseman. If you're the Majors, that's something you definitely don't want to do in this situation, <laughs> is making out in this spot on the bases. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch to Johnson on its way. He takes outside for ball three. It looked like they wanted that fastball up. It looked like Warkin was kind of standing up a little bit and it missed outside. It didn't get as high as I'm sure they would have liked either. Yeah, you can take there by Johnson as well in that situation with two strikes. Maybe some pressure. You think maybe he swings at that. Really good approach here. Full count. Full count one out. We'll see if Jaco's on the move here. The pitch from Booyer Howard. He's not running. Johnson takes a called strike three on the outside corner. He doesn't like the call. He thought it missed outside. And that is out number two and a big out for Casey Booyer Howard. Yeah, massive out there. Massive pitch to make. Uh, Johnson definitely doesn't like the call. Uh, a lot of people in the stands certainly didn't like the call either. Uh, and, and you can see why, of course. But that's a great job there by the pitcher just to pick the corner in that spot, especially considering the last pitch where he just missed outside, even though it should have been up perhaps, as we talked about, but really, really good job there. It's such a pivotal moment to get that strikeout called. So that'll bring up Humberto Ruiz. He homered in the second inning, has been over since. We'll see if he can add an insurance run for the majors. A bit of a high strike there, but it's called strike one. Nonetheless, to Ruiz, 0-1 now. Howard looks in, gets the sign from Warkin, and now sets out there on the mound. Runners at the corners, two outs. Here's the 0-1. Ruiz takes that one. Looked very similar to the pitch that Johnson got, but this time it's a ball, 1-1. One one. So Booyer Howard looks in for another sign. Ruiz is ready for it at the plate. For the 1-1. One one. Ruiz takes low and away, holds up his runners, and the count moves to two balls and a strike now. Well, this pitch is really missing, you know, low and away, even high and away. Really, this whole inning, you wonder if that's maybe an approach from the majors too. Hey, you see that outside pitch, take it, lay off it. Try to get something inside. It was yeah. a pitch that was inside that Ruiz sent out of the ballpark exactly. earlier on. Here's the pitch, was tempted by that one, was outside, and you saw a motion, that's out and uh, kind of <laughs> congratulating himself. Looked like he took a little bit of pride in that take, three and one. <laughs> Made sure uh, everyone around him knew too. Everyone in the ballpark knew that was outside. And again, another good take uh, outside. That outside pitch is not working uh, for the moment for the Jackfish. Three and one to Ruiz, big spot, two out. Booyer Howard sets, here's the offering. That's a breaking ball and it's gonna miss low ball four. So the bases are loaded for Adam Philmon in a big spot trying to get the majors some insurance. Well, what a golden opportunity for again, the number eight hitter here for the Majors who, uh, while he has had a rather quiet day at the plate, he's been active in center field with the glove, certainly has value there and has really been showing it uh, all game long, really all season long. And here's a chance now to potentially blow this game. I mean, a single would likely score two runs here and would really put the Majors in the driver's seat in this one, although they already, of course, are in that case, but it would remove the save situation and Give the majors a little more breathing room, if you will. We talked about Philmon battling earlier on. He leads the majors in pitches seen per plate appearance with yep. four. He averages four pitches seen per plate appearance. He makes guys work out there on the mound. He'll look to do that to get a good pitch to hit here. There was a pretty good pitch right there on the first one, and it's 0-1. It's not really Philmon's style, though, as we've seen so far. Yeah, but putting together a good at-bat is exactly what you want him to do here, of course. Bases loaded, two out. That's all you're asking for, just like he's done uh, really for the majority of this season so far. Setting it 0 for 3 in the game. Boy, would it be a good time to get his first hit here. The offering is going to miss just outside. It looked to me there like Warkin uh, may have caused that to be a ball. The way he yeah. caught it, it was kind of awkward and didn't get the call, although it was close to hitting that corner. They've had a real hard time getting that outside pitch to be called a strike this inning. They've tried to work out there, haven't gotten the results just yet. 1-1. One and one to Philmon, the pitch on its way, and that one had some movement inside. Philmon fouls it back, and it is one and two. After pretty consistent off-speed pounding of the outside corner, that was a fastball inside, and Philmon couldn't catch up to it. So on one and two, we'll see if he's able to do that. Great chance here for Welland to escape. A bases-loaded jam with two out, have a chance to go 
rally potentially in the ninth inning. One ball, two strikes, two outs. The pitch from Booyer Howard to Philmon. That's going to miss well. outside. Two balls and two strikes now to the major center fielder. Yeah, that one well outside there, clearly missing. And if you're film on here, you'd like a couple more of those. But also, just again, putting together a good AB. 2-2 two -two here, another big spot. So Booyer Howard looks in. Comes set. The 2-2 two -two offering to Philmon. That's outside, ball three. So the count will move to full. The runners will be off on the pitch. And Philmon has a great opportunity to get his first RBI as a London major. Now, obviously, the majors trust Mike DeLong, the closer. They know he can get outs, but if you can add that insurance, that's huge. Any run you can get, you'll take. Booyer Howard sets on the mound. Three and two, two out. Big pitch on its way. Philmont hits that one on the ground, back up the middle. Going to be a tough play for Dadson. It gets through. One will score. Jaco around third. He's going to come home. Bobbled by Mary Adam Ruiz is held up at third base. It's an RBI single for Adam Philmont, and it's a 5 nothing ball game. Big spot, big moment, big time hit there for Adam Philmon. A quiet day at the plate, but again, another great at bat. Like we've talked about, feels like all day great in the field with his glove and now coming through in such a pivotal moment. That was going to be a really tough play for Brandon Dadson as yeah. he had to range a long way and it was not hit super hard, yeah. but it was hit in the right spot and that got that ball through. It got past Dadson into center field. There was a shot maybe at Ruiz at second base, but instead he'll advance to third on that ball into center field. So film on a board with a huge single. Majors now up 5-0. As that'll bring up Keith Candell. That's going to miss. Oh, no, that's going to be a called strike one. 0-1-2 oh, Candell. That's what Booyer Howard's been looking for on hitting, and he gets it now a little <laughs> bit too late. Down five runs. And, you know, well, and you got to... Gonna be in tough there because that was a situation where you finally get that soft contact, right? And you think, okay, maybe this is the, finally the soft contact we've needed here right up the middle with the force at every base, and yet it just sneaks through. That's baseball sometimes, and that's such a tough break for Welland, who now go down 5 nothing here. And the, hey, the inning isn't even over yet. Yeah, Candell now has an 0 2 count on him after a couple of called strikes. Buir Howard gathers his thoughts, looks in for the sign, and now comes set out there on the mound. Here's the 0-2. Candell takes that one up and away for ball one. So one ball, two strikes the count. I wonder if they go back to that outside corner here now. Try to pick that one last time. The two strikes. Coming set is Booyer Howard. We'll see what Candell can do with this pitch on its way. On the move is Philmon. It's swung on and missed for strike three. So the Majors go down finally here in the eighth inning, but not before they strike for two. We're through eight complete at Labatt Park. The Majors lead it 5-0.
Welcome back to Labatt Park and Jackson. A bit of a surprise, but a familiar face back out there on the Mount Pedro de los Santos is staying in this ball game. Well, and you wonder just how much of an impact that film on uh, two RBI single had uh, on Rube Shanderdat's decision to, uh, to keep Pedro de los Santos out there, give him a shot to get the complete game. Don't want to say the word. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he's got a great opportunity here. Just two hits, no runs allowed through eight innings. Yes, he's up <laughs> well over 100 pitches at this point. Um, oh, that one's fouled off there. So Todd Gowan comes into the ball game to pinch hit for Dennis Day Benning. But I, I do like this move. You know, you're in a 5 nothing game now. You've got some leeway, right? If De Los Santos does get into some trouble, you do ha still have options in your bullpen. Absolutely. Mike DeLong, one of those options out there, and uh, we'll see if he's used. He's just kind of standing around and waiting. If De Los Santos gets yep. into any trouble at all, it's DeLong's ninth inning. Uh, but for now, it's Todd Gowan at the plate. He's down 0-2 very quickly. The pitch from De Los Santos to Gowan. He swings through that one. Three pitches, all it takes for De Los Santos to record the first out of the top of the ninth inning. Feels like he's working faster almost <laughs> at this point in the game now. How does he have the energy to do that? <laughs> no I don't know. I'm pretty burnt out after these games that I'm just broadcasting. This guy's going out there and throwing a ton of pitches in, in the ninth inning as the umpires are converging here. Not sure what for. We hear our colleague for the Welland broadcast, Elliot Price, saying there was a foul tip. and They're going to rule it an out. So a foul tip that was caught by Jayco. I'm not sure what the argument was there. I don't know if he maybe dropped it and they thought he, he foul tipped it. I wasn't fully paying attention to Jayco. I was more focused on De Los Santos and how he, he was carrying himself at this point in the ball game. As Andrew Mercier digs in. De Los Santos at 123 pitches. Mercier needs to get something going here for the Jackfish. One out in the top of the ninth. Mercier one for three in the ball game. Here's the pitch on the ground, hits softly. Mercier fouled that one off of his foot, so we will do it again. It's 0-1 now to Mercier. Mercier hasn't had bad at-bats at all. It's certainly a homecoming for him, as we talked about. He's from London, Ontario. I'd imagine this game does mean a little more, perhaps, than the average IBL game to him. He's been around for a while in the league, but I'm sure that any time he gets yep. to play in front of the... Absolutely. The, in, in his hometown, I should say, as that pitch is swung on and missed by Mercier 0-2. I'm sure his kids are out at the ball game yep. as well. Everybody's cheering him on here from his family in London, and I'm sure it is a big, big ball game for him. Uh, the 0-2 on its way from De Los Santos to Mercier. Swung on and missed. And Jaco will just put the tag on him for the second out of the inning. So De Los Santos comes out. We're talking about the heavy workload and he strikes out the first two batters. Unbelievable what he's doing right now. Just fantastic stuff. Really uh, making a case that he is uh, the major's ace early on in this season. And, and just, he's just dialed. I mean, he's working so fast. He's working at the same speed, not faster than he was in the first inning. It's unbelievable stuff here. Wish I had this kind of endurance, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Here's the pitch from De Los Santos to Brandon Underhill. That's in the dirt. It's going to be ball one. As that bounce as well in front of the plate, but blocked by Jaco. De Los Santos at 127 now on the pitch count. He looks in, into the windup. Here's the offering. That's got the outside corner. It's a called strike one. Looked like Underhill was taken all the way on that pitch. Wasn't quite ready to swing. Oh, two out, down big. You're just trying to get on base any way you can here. That pitch is going to get the outside corner. Looked to be maybe a little bit off the plate, but at this point of the game, with the game that De Los Santos has thrown, you give him that call. Absolutely, he picks that corner. Still working fast, one strike away. The one-two home to Underhill, lined that one foul, and he stays alive, keeps the Jackfish alive here in this ball game. Now our pitch counter, albeit through some technical issues. Of course it is a you know, human element, but we have it up here at 130 pitches. That's what I've got too, Jackson. We've got that on our broadcast, and that's what I've got in my scorebook, so. Unbelievable. Here is the one-two once again from De Los Santos. Crowd cheering him on. The offering just high. He wanted that call. So did the crowd. Wow. So did some people up here in the press box. <laughs> it's two and two now to Underhill. De Los Santos at 131. The crowd is cheering. Here's the two-two home from De Los Santos. Outside ball three. So the count moves to full now on Underhill, who's one for one. He's got a walk and a single. For a 5 nothing game, 
there's a lot of emotion in this park, <laughs> and they're even on that call. I mean, whether it be up here or even just around the park. Middle Santos still giving it out there. Full count, two out. The pitch to Underhill on its way. Inside and nearly hits him, so he walks Underhill. That'll be his fifth walk of the ball game. Underhill's second. And there's a runner at first base now with two out. We'll see what the next move is for Rube Trinidad at Brent Wales. Looks like they are staying put on the bench. It's De Los Santos' game, unless he runs into some more trouble. As Eric Marriott, the number nine hitter, steps up. Keep that pitch count running as well, of course. And yet you wonder kind of uh, just how quick Leash would be in this situation. Although you've got to think this is De Los Santos' inning here. That swung on and missed. Looks like he took a little something off of that pitch to Marriott, and he swings through it. It's 0-1. Now, what a moment here, though, for Pedro de los Santos, right? New team this year, and he's had a great start to this year, and what a moment this would be if he could finish it off. De los Santos looks at first, the 0-1, and that will hit Marriott. So you wonder, at, at this high of a pitch count, if he's losing that command a little bit, Group Chanadat steps up. DeLong warming in the bullpen. First and second for Brandon Dadson. Yeah, and, and if you're DeLos Santos here, you gotta remember there's two out, right? Yes, you have a runner, runners on first and second now, but you've got the two out. That's, looks like there's a mound visit here. Yeah, we'll see what Rube Chanadat's doing. Maybe he's trying to gauge where DeLos Santos is at. It could be the end of DeLos Santos' line as well. And... De Los Santos shaking his head. This is my game. I want to finish this. He's telling that to Roop right now. He's trying to convince him to <laughs> let him stay out there. He's nodding. He's shaking his head. He's, he's talking out there. That's for sure. Yeah. Certainly a conversation on the mound there. And a, lefty, and a very spirited one, too. Lefty-lefty matchup. Roop's going to let him stay in, and he gets a cheer from this crowd. De Los Santos needs one more out. Lefty-lefty matchup. He'll face Dadson. He sits at 135. Carlos talks to him. Looks like Artiega is giving him a little pep talk here, trying to get through this last batter. It's the top of the order. You didn't want to turn it over, but he did. And now it's his job to work out of it. He doesn't want DeLong to come in. I'm not sure what the agreement is with Roop Chanadat, how much longer the leash will be. But uh, if you're DeLos Santos, you want to finish it off right here. He feels he's got the juice to do it. Here's the offering to Dadson in the dirt ball one. Well, and you got to think the message, too, right now to the Willen hitters is take. Right? DeLos Santos' command, especially in the last couple at-bats, has been iffy, to say the least. The 1-0. On the ground, a shortstop. This could do it. Candell will shovel it over to Chris McQueen. What a game from Pedro De Los Santos. A complete game shutout on only two hits. And the Wellen Jackfish lose to the London Majors 5-0 here at Labatt Park. The Majors move to 5-2 on this young season. And Jackson, what a performance. Just in control, it felt like the entire game. There were moments where he had the bases loaded, for example, in the seventh inning where there was a jam, he was able to get out of it. In this situation, runners at first and second, looks like his command may be in question. Room Chandler, that they go have a conversation. Whatever was said was said, but he stays in the game and delivers ultimately. What a fantastic moment. What a fantastic start to this season for Pedro De Los Santos. De Los Santos' season ERA now drops down to 0.75 after that complete game shutout. So De Los Santos having an awesome, awesome season for the majors and a terrific performance here. We can't forget the solo home run from Humberto Ruiz, his first of the year in the second inning. That was an exciting moment. And we do hope you enjoyed the broadcast. For Jackson Farrow doing double duty, producing and on the call with me today, I'm Dylan Baker. We'll talk to you tomorrow when the majors host the Kitchener Panthers.